Great news, PlayStation fans! Sony presented a deep dive into the PlayStation 5's system architecture. Bad news, PlayStation fans! It was boring. So we hustled and built a custom decompressor into the I.O. unit, one capable of handling over 5 gigabytes of Kraken format input data a second. After decompression, that typically becomes 8 or 9 gigabytes, but the unit itself is capable of outputting as much as 22 gigabytes a second if the data happened to compress particularly well. For all the detailed information in there, it was a very technical presentation, and definitely felt more like a university lecture you hadn't done the reading for rather than any kind of spectacular reveal event. Which is a shame because these speeds and feeds actually translate to some genuinely exciting features for the new PlayStation. So, for those of you who can't spare an hour to watch lead architect Mark Cerny explain in minute detail the nerdy intricacies of how the PlayStation 5 will work, we're here with a shorter and more basic rundown of what all this technical jargon actually means for future owners of the console. So, here are five boring PlayStation 5 features that are interesting, actually. I want to focus in on just one number here, which is how long it takes to load a gigabyte of data from a hard drive. Game worlds are getting bigger and more ambitious these days, and even with advances in technology, regardless of your game of choice, there is one enemy we all have to face – loading screens. Sony is seeking to eliminate this time-wasting problem with some clever hardware in the PlayStation 5, so that games load faster and we can actually get on with playing them. The current-gen PlayStation 4 uses a hard disk drive, which is a literal disk onto which your game data is saved, a bit like how music is stored along the tiny grooves of a vinyl or CD. Kids, ask your parents about CD and vinyl, if you want to have a very boring conversation. Because of the way a hard disk drive stores data, your game files can end up being saved in lots of different physical places on the disk, meaning that your PlayStation 4 has to root around or seek every bit of data before it can even begin to load it all. Mark Cerny reckons a PS4 spends two-thirds of its time performing these seeks and only a third actually loading the game, and by his calculations it takes 20 seconds to load one gig of data. So, any time you have to reload the game, you have to wait for it to first find all of this data and then load it, as Cerny explains. A gigabyte is not much data. Games are using 5 or 6 gigabytes of RAM on PlayStation 4, so boot times and load times can get pretty grim. Or to put that differently, as a player you wait for the game to boot, wait for the game to load, wait for the level to reload every time you die, and you wait for what is euphemistically called fast travel. To circumvent this wasted time, the PlayStation 5 is planning to use an SSD or solid state drive, which stores data in flash memory blocks. To avoid us turning this into a computer science lecture, all you need to know is that this allows them to read thousands of data locations simultaneously rather than one at a time like on a hard disk drive, greatly speeding up load times by eliminating the time needed to look for each bit of data. Sony also wants to use a custom SSD that is so fast that finding all your data will be effectively instantaneous, and data will be loaded at 5 gigabytes a second rather than the current much slower 50 to 100 megabytes per second or, if you only want to remember one number today, around a hundred times faster. For players, this should mean loading times in games will become a thing of the past on the PlayStation platform. No longer will you have to stand in an elevator for ages or squeeze through a small arbitrary gap as the rest of the level loads in. Gone are the days where you stare blankly at a loading screen. Let's get on with the game! Although the Spider-Man subway rides are adorable, just saying. With an SSD, though, no seeks, so no need to make brand new files with the changes incorporated into them, which means no installs as you know them today. It's not just general loading times that will be improved by the use of an SSD. One additional pain in a player's backside are patches, which is that thing where you can't play Red Dead Redemption 2 because you have to download a 50 gigabyte fix. Now, the PlayStation 5 won't eliminate patches entirely or make your internet download these sometimes monstrous files any faster. However, what it will do is cut out a stage in the patch process on Sony's system. Currently, when you download a patch, not only do you have to wait for the download, but also the installation of the patch, which frustratingly can sometimes take just as long, if not longer. Like the time you had an hour to spare and a new patch turned your Destiny 2 session into a rousing game of staring at a progress bar. This installation has to happen because before the game can boot up, it has to make a new game file with the new patches added in. 
but despite this added step, often the game file will eventually be unable to fit in one place, and data ends up being spread out onto other areas of the hard disk drive anyway, meaning that at some point your favourite PlayStation 4 title may chug slightly after one too many patches, as the console throws a tantrum trying to find all the files it needs. It's only six and a half years old after all, but the PS5 with its SSD drive can load lots of data simultaneously from different locations on the disk, so it doesn't matter where the data is stored. All you have to do is download the patch and you should be ready to go, by which I mean go get your butt kicked in whatever comes after Destiny 2. Achieving this unification of functionality took years of efforts by AMD, as any roadmap advancement creates a potential divergence in logic. Running PS4 and PS4 titles at boosted frequencies has also added complexity. The boost is truly massive this time around, and some game code just can't handle it. Testing has to be done on a title-by-title -title basis. One very exciting addition to the upcoming Sony console is backwards compatibility. Sony is no stranger to the concept of being able to play your old games on your new console, having included it in early PS3s. However, as explained by Cerny in his PowerPoint Flexathon, one thing that restricted the inclusion of backwards compatibility was how they did it, because putting the PS2's chipset in the PS3 console proved to be too expensive. For the PlayStation 5, Sony has instead opted to build backwards compatibility directly into the PlayStation 5's custom chip. So the PS5 chip can run in three modes. These are the native PlayStation 5 mode, the PS4 Legacy mode and the Pro Legacy mode. Although each PS4 game will need to be tested to run on the PlayStation 5, Sony aims to have their 100 most played titles available on backwards compatibility at launch, which might make the decision to upgrade easier for many players. That said, Sony recommends keeping your PS5's internal storage free for new games, and play PS4 games by plugging in an external hard drive. We would hope that if you've already got hard drives full of PS4 games, you can plug those into your new console and have them work straight away. I say straight away, but obviously there's the 8 to 10 seconds needed to plug the USB in the wrong way, plug the USB in the wrong way again somehow, then plug the USB in the right way. Third time's a charm. Probably the most dramatic progress in the PlayStation 4 generation has been with virtual reality. The PSVR hardware has its own audio unit. It supports about 50 pretty decent 3D sound sources. And this provided a hint as to where we could go with audio, as well as some valuable experience. If there's one part of the gaming experience that varies most between players, it's how we hear our games. I, for instance, play The Last of Us from underneath the duvet, so everything sounds a bit muffled. Gaming headsets are popular, and some people even have fancy surround sound speaker systems in their homes to immerse themselves into a game. These make it easier to work out what is happening around you in the game, as sound cues tell you where things are, like that enemy that's right behind you and is about to completely destroy you. However, that sound is not pinpoint accurate, and not everyone uses headsets or state-of-the-art sound systems. So, in order to create a more immersive experience for the masses, Sony is stepping in with 3D audio. Via the means of some terrifying looking tech and sitting a very bored looking man in a soundproof room, Sony is trying to give the PlayStation 5's audio more depth, so you have a better idea of exactly where sounds are coming from, rather than a vague idea of it's behind you, like a villain in a pantomime. Plus, Sony is aiming to make this work across multiple devices, so not only will headphone and soundbar owners feel the benefit, but so will those that rely on TV speakers, creating a kind of virtual surround sound. Right, Mark? Maybe you'll be sending us a photo of your ear, and we'll choose a neural network to pick the closest HRTF in our library. What? Photo of your ear. S s send you what? Photo of your ear. This section's over. Historically, our process for setting CPU and GPU frequencies has relied on some heavy-duty guesswork with regards to how much electrical power games will consume and how much heat will be produced as a result inside of the console. It's all well and good creating immersive 3D sound for your video games, but what good is that if it's all drowned out by the deafening sound of your console's cooling fan? With the PlayStation 5, Sony plans to deliver top-quality next-gen gaming, but that requires a great amount of power, and with that great power comes great responsibility, and also a lot of heat, as Uncle Ben probably would have gone on to say if he hadn't been murdered. There are entire markets for both simple and extravagant cooling systems for gaming PCs, and we've all known the pain of a console's fan going into hyperdrive as soon as too many character models turn up on screen at once. So 
explaining what is Sony going to do with its new console in order to prevent its calling fans from spinning so fast that it sounds like the system is about to take flight. The answer to this is some clever new programming that directs the PS5's chips to budget their resources in a more sophisticated way, which Sony is calling Boost. In other words, they're not stuffing a neon blue nitrogen cooling system in there, which means they must not be getting my letters, but they are getting smarter about keeping the console from getting too hot in the first place. <sighs> Uncle Ben would have been so proud. But again, the murdering thing. Oh. Somebody help! Oh. Uncle Ben! Uncle Ben, hang on! Uncle Ben! So there are just a handful of boring sounding things that actually give us reasons to be excited about the upcoming PlayStation 5. If you'd like to go into an even nerdier deep dive on the new console's capabilities, do check out Digital Foundry's in-depth look over on Eurogamer.com, link in the description. And if you want to find out more about the PlayStation 5 in future, make sure you subscribe as we will try to keep you all in the know. Why not hit the bell as a bonus? Cheers for watching and see you next time. Bye!